In this tutorial, we'll build a full grasshopper definition to create lattice structures inside any geometry. Lattice structures are commonly used to reduce weight in aerospace and 3D printed parts, or to increase surface area for things like heat exchangers. We'll start by converting the base shape into a voxel and filling it with a gyroid unit cell. Then I'll show two different ways to trim the lattice so it fits perfectly inside the original shape. Finally, will define areas of the design that stay solid. To follow along with me, you will need to install three main plugins, Crystallon, Weaverbird, and Dendro. Let me first show you how you can install them. Here in Rhino, on the command line, you're going to type package manager. Now in this search bar, I'm going to search for the first plugin, which is Crystallon. Here it is. I'm going to select it and I'm going to press install and it's going to install like this. All right, once that's finished, let us install the second one. The second one is Weaver Bird. I'm going to search the same way here. Select it and press install. I've already installed it, so I'm going to leave it, but you're going to do it the same way. The third one is Dendro. I'll search the same way. Here it is. You're going to select it and press install. Now, once you have finished installing, it will tell you to restart Rhino. So I'm going to close everything and I'm going to restart Rhino. Feel free to use any geometry or product design you want. I'll be using this one here. For this example, I'm going to start with this sub D geometry. So we're going to reference it using a sub D container. I will come back to the other geometry types in a second. The important thing is that any geometry we input must be converted into a mesh. So here I'm gonna use the mesh from sub D component. I'll use this one and it's gonna give me a mesh. Now, if your geometry is a pure B-Rep, for example, let me draw a box here. I would use a B-Rep container to reference it, and then I would have to convert this to a mesh by passing it through a mesh container. If it is already a mesh, we can just reference it directly and continue our script from there. So I'm going to delete both of them for now. Now this sub D conversion gives me a very high resolution mesh. So a subdivision level of two is enough for this. Now on this mesh, we're going to apply a grid of boxes and on top of those boxes, we're going to apply our lattice. For this, we're going to use a plugin called Crystallon. I'm going to search for VD, which is the shortcut for Crystallon V2 voxels by distance. It needs a geometry, so I'm going to feed the mesh directly into it. For the plane, let's go for the XY plane. And for the X, Y, and Z voxel size, let us go for something like 40 units. Now, we can see something here, but these voxels don't cover the entire geometry. So here we have an option, fill completely. I'm gonna use a Boolean toggle, set it to true and connect it right here. Right, now we've filled our geometry with these voxels going to put some cells inside these voxels. For this, we're going to use another crystalline component. The shortcut is CSF, which is for crystalline shell fill. It needs the voxels, a unit cell, and a tolerance. For the unit cell, we're going to use a combination of components. First, I'm going to search for unit cell selector, and then I'm going to search for cell type. Here, you have options for the cell type. Let us say I have a gyroid shell. Basically, this is the stored geometry. You can just zoom over here and see our gyroid structure. You can also use other types, but let's go for the gyroid shape. We're going to use this for our unit cell input. The voxels we just created will go into the voxels input. And for the tolerance, let us go with 0.1. This is like how close vertices need to be to get welded together. Let's give it some time and we get our lattice. So to visualize this better, I'm going to use a component from the Weaverbird plugin called Weaverbird's Mesh Thicken. We have our mesh thicken and let us see the result using a custom preview. I'm going to apply a generic white material. So now we can see it, but it is too jagged. To fix this, let me use in between here a component from Weaverbird called Catmore Clark Subdivision. Oh. All right, now we get a much smoother result. Here in the mesh thicken, you can control the thickness 
The default distance is five units. Let us give it a slider for 10 units. You can control the thickness. For example, if you give it 10 units here, that's maybe seven units, seems fair. Anyway, now we have our base ladder structure, but the problem we are seeing now is it is covering the entire area. It's jagged and it is not following our original form. So we need a way to trim our ladder structure. Let me clean up this part over here and we're gonna work on how to trim this. There is a component called, all right, I'm going to search for TS, which is a shortcut for Crystalline's trim shell. I'm going to use this one and it asks for two inputs, the lattice structure that we are going to trim and the geometry to trim with. I'm going to use our gyroid shell for the lattice and the geometry we're going to trim with is the original mesh we got from our sub D. So let me use a mesh container to just clean up our wire connection. I'm going to move this over here and connect it to our geometry input and the trimmed result to our Catmull Clark component. Now, we can see it. It now follows our structure, but there is a problem with this one. If you zoom over here, the cut is not perfectly related to the form. There are some wobbly cuts around the edges. Another way we can do this is based on volume using the Dendro plugin. I'm going to pass the untrimmed lattice directly to the Catmull Clark and Mesh Thicken components, and I'm going to disable this crystal on trim part. You can choose this method or the next method I'm gonna show you. So here, after the Catmull Clark, we're going to convert this into a volume-based operation. I'm going to use Mesh to Volume. For the settings, let me search for Create Settings. Also from Dendro. I'm going to set the voxel size. This is a relative distance. If your model is big, you have to measure how large you want the voxels. I'm going to set this to 10 for the voxel size. Let us turn this volume back into a mesh. So I'm going to use volume to mesh. Volume to volume and settings to settings. We get a mesh, let us visualize it. Now, it is a very jagged result. So, let us reduce this voxel size. Let's go for two. This will take some time. The more you reduce the voxel size, you're going to get a denser mesh and the time to process will increase. So now we get this one based on a voxel conversion. Now I'm gonna create another voxelized mesh, this time from our original shape, and we're going to use a Boolean intersection of the two volumes. So let me copy this mesh to volume part. This time, I'm going to use the original mesh we started with. And let us find the intersection between those two volumes. I'm going to use volume intersection from this volume to this volume, and we're going to use the result of this for our volume to mesh. This is perfectly cut, and it is also relatively fast, and it gives you a solid mesh result. But it comes with a problem, some of the edges are still jagged. So let us fix that. After this volume intersection, I'm going to use smooth volume here in between. I'm going to take the intersection result and pass it through here. And now look, it is getting better, right? Now you can also increase the resolution to get a more smooth result, but I'm going to stop it here. The next thing I'm going to show you is how you can add some parts of this to be solid. For example, here in the joint area or in the bolt connection area, you may want it to be a solid fill instead of a lattice. So that is what we're going to do next. So here in Rhino, here is the geometry that we used. Let me copy it over here. Let's say I want this part to be solid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a geometry that covers this part. For example, I could just copy this face, Control C, Control V, and then use offset sub D. Now this part is going to be solid. This way you will generate some geometry on the parts that you want to be solid. Or maybe you can just use some boxes. You just need a piece of geometry that covers the part of the sub D that you want to be solid. So let us see how we can do that. Let me disable this part for now. I have already prepared some geometries here. I have this part to be solid, this, this, and also all of these connection parts. I want them to be solid, right? So I will reference them separately. What I'm gonna do is, let me go back to the start of the script 
and I'm going to copy this part, the one we used to reference our sub D before. I'm going to reference all together as set multiple sub Ds, or you can use a mesh, whatever it is, and I'm going to select everything and press enter. Now, this gives me a mesh. I'm going to join them using mesh join into one. Now we're going to turn this into a volume. So I'm going to copy this mesh to volume, set up and apply it here. What we're going to do is simply find the union between our previous lattice result and this new solid volume. So first I'm going to find the intersection between our original shell and our lattice. So I'm going to use volume intersection from this volume to this volume. And we're going to add this solid volume back to this result. So I'm going to use volume union and I'm going to use a merge component to combine both of those two volumes and use this here. Since this is a dashed line, which means it's a data tree structure, I'm going to flatten it because I want one solid result. I'm going to use this volume union result to feed into our smooth volume component. Let us see our result. I'm going to preview off all the rest of the geometry and also the rhino parts, and let us see. Now, the parts that I referenced have become solid. All these connection parts have become solid. What if you want some other part of the geometry to be solid? For example, here. Let me draw a curve, and I want the region that this curve covers to become solid, so I will just extrude it up. I'm going to use set object display mode and set it to wireframe so we can see through it. I want the region that this geometry covers to be solid. In the same way, I'm going to go back here and use a brep container. Right click, set one brep, convert it into a mesh, and join it through here. So I'm going to hold down shift or simply use merge and pass it through here. Now the region that this geometry covers has become solid. You can also move it down to cover the base part so it becomes solid. That is it for this video. You can apply this to any different type of geometry that you want to see. If you want this script and also all the Rhino files, that will be available on my Patreon. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.